most of you will not because you have never seen it before. So I'm not going to bring it out right now, but I want to ask uh, some family history questions. And not to be answered by my brothers and sisters. This is to be answered by the grandkids and the great grandkids. But they don't know the answer. Well, we'll see how well they've been studying the history. Okay. This is a test. If you pass the test, you get to go back. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, you can't answer this question, Larry Merley. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My father, Lee Shumway, which all of you are descendants of, had my mother. He married my mother. Did he have any other wives? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How many? One, three. One previous One. wife. He wasn't a polygamist, he just had a previous wife. What happened to his first wife? She died. She died. From what? Childhood. In those days, this is many years ago, they didn't have the care they have today. She gave birth to her second son, and at that time, my father was trapping. Do you know what trapping means? He knew that country down around Blanding, and he could get five or six dollars for every pair of ears from a coyote or a fox. And he would go on this big loop, it would take him a week or so, and then he'd come back home. But while he was on that loop during this hunting, his first wife died. She died. Uh, because they didn't take care of her in giving birth. And she had stuff left in her that uh, caused her to die. Uh, can I make one note? Don't correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they left the packing in. Well, whatever reason was, she died. Yeah. And he found out from people that had to go find him. You can imagine that you're how he must have felt. Here he is thinking everything's okay. He knew he had a new little boy. He was excited about a second son. And so he goes off thinking everything's okay, only to be told later by someone that he has lost his wife. 10 days later. 10 was days he, was later. Was she premature or was he yeah, did she know? to have the babies while he was gone? He, she had the baby before he left. Oh. oh. And then oh. he left. Okay. Uh, because he, he knew the baby was fine. She and got it, sick a yeah. couple days later because of the... And there's, there's a lot of history about Lee Shumway, of which we could take an hour or two and you guys would get sunburned here in that much time. But I think it's important for all of you to understand that the history book of, of Lee Shumway describes, the cover describes what kind of person he was. A man of quiet dignity. He was Respected in the community as a man who was honorable, a man who never told a lie, a man <clears throat> I lived with him all my life until he died, and I watched him smash his hand with a hammer. I watched him trip and hurt his toe, hurt his toe and never once heard him say a swear word. He never did say any bad words in all of his life. Even when 
uh, he would would have been natural to do so. Even when he was hurt a lot, he still never said any more than shucky darn or something like that. <laughs> he was a man that uh, people remember as being very athletic. He loved to have his kids in athletics. In fact, I remember Rex, who started most of the athleticism in our family. Cade wasn't inclined to be in, uh, in uh, basketball. We didn't have football in Blanding at that time. And Dad loved the sport so much and encouraged it so much that he'd always take Rex and the team to the away games. And that, in those days, was quite a travel because you'd come all the way up to Price and to uh, cities up there where we'd play the teams. Dad was uh, always talked about as being the fastest pitcher of anyone in, in Blanding. In fact, he was so good at the age of 16 that the uh, old man's team, or the senior team, mm -hmm. asked him to come and pitch because he was so good about uh, pitching a, a fastball. Now, <clears throat> I wondered about types of heirlooms that, uh, that we talked about bringing here to the reunion. I brought one here because my mother, and this is kind of a trivial uh, little thing, <coughs> is a handkerchief. And she embroidered S in that handkerchief as a memento for us to have. And so, to most people, it means nothing. But to me, it represents my mother and what she did with her talents. There's, there's a ton of things about Dad that we could talk about. Uh, the Buck talked about him never wanting to work for wages. He never did like to work for someone else. He did a, a few times. In fact, I have seen the pay stubs when he used to work for uh, a uranium company, a vanadium company, and he'd get paid like 50 cents an hour for pretty hard labor. But he always knew because he trapped in the San Juan area, he always knew where the outcrops were for the precious minerals. And he got into the uranium business and mined some, but mostly knew where they were and sold, sold the claims. But he never did make much money. I remember him selling a mine that made millions of dollars. He sold it for $1,000 in a pair of boots. I suppose back then that was quite a bit of money. It's all he needed. But the person who took the claims went on to make millions of dollars. So he was just that way, never a very wealthy man, but enough to support his family. You might mention that he was left-handed. Yeah, he was a left-handed pitcher. So he pitched with his left hand. I can't even hardly throw with my left hand. I don't know if he pitched a nice ball. So the, another heirloom that I he, he was brought with me. Right? Yeah. Pardon? Just, I, I was just making sure he's left-handed. Yeah, he's left-handed. Okay. Was this is something that I always think of uh, when I see it because it's actually <laughs> something that my father wore. You should wear that. Yeah. What are you doing? You should wear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't have BYU on this hat. <laughs> but I remember my father wearing this hat everywhere he went. He'd go out to work and go into the rock quarries and or he'd go out hunting and stuff, he'd wear this hat. So it represents my father. <clears throat> so basically, I, I just want to leave you with the idea that your posterity is something to be proud of. I have been all around this world. I've gone to the Middle East. I've been in London. I've been to Turkey. I've been to Australia and, and Mexico. I've been all over the United States. And I yet to find uh, 
any disparaging remarks about the Shumways. In fact, as soon as I mentioned the name of Shumway, Mom and I went to a Tongan ward in Australia. We went there just to visit. And we sat down in the audience thinking that we'd be out of, out of sight and just kind of listen to, to the Tongan ward. And uh, <laughs> the bishop saw our name tag and said Elder Shumway and Sister Shumway. Next thing we knew, we was up at the stand speaking. <laughs> he knew uh, the Del, Del Eric. Shumway. Eric. Eric Shumway. And there, there isn't a tongue in the life today. You'll see him in Salt Lake City or anywhere. If you mention the name Shumway, their appreciation and love of Eric Shumway is almost beyond description because he learned their language and loved those people and did things with them to where he almost like walked on water. He was that great in their eyes. And then he became the, uh, the president of BYU Hawaii and served as a mission president in Tonga. And, but there's been other uh, famous Shumways. And so be proud of the fact that you come from Shumway blood and that you have it in your veins and it doesn't make any difference whether you were born into this family or adopted into this family. You have a Shumway heritage with you and, and we're proud to be a part of this, this heritage and to be here on this reunion with you. Okay, should we head back? No, yes. I just yes. want to say one thing. I will never forget the day when I was uh, tracking with Daddy, going with him to hunt for mine, I mean, tracking, yeah. and there was a big, huge rattlesnake right in front of us, and he said, hold still, don't move, and he got this great big, huge rock and just smashed that rattlesnake on top and killed it. Uh, <laughs> I, I said, you saved my life. <laughs> yeah, we all probably have many... Uh, experiences with dad that we could tell. I thought of uh, Katrina who grew up down there, probably remembers a lot of things about Grandpa Shumway, having grown up there as one of his uh, grandchildren. Well, I just remember uh, one time I was really upset and I wanted to run away from home and I went down there and he and Grandma were sitting on the couch reading scriptures in the middle of the day. Yeah. <laughs> it just floored me. I thought you read them in the morning or at night. <laughs> and uh, they just scooted over and let me in and made everything all better. Let you run away for a few hours, huh? To their house, yep. <laughs> Buddy, can, can we, can you tell the story about Mary Lee, where she went deer hunting with the family, carrying a gun, had this big buck. In front of her, and she couldn't shoot. Closed, it. She closed. She closed the wrong eye. Well, probably the, one of the famous memories of Lee Shumway is, is the deer hunting. That was the thing we all did as young boys, and even the daughters. And we had to ask the uncles to come on down from Salt Lake, and we'd go out hunting every year. And, we would always get deer, and the aunts and uncles would take the deer we'd shot and go back. <laughs> Perfect plan. I always remember them hanging out in that old apple tree out back. Yeah, yeah. that was the yeah. deer, yeah. deer yeah. hanging tree. I remember taking the hooves, because you cut the hooves off the leg, and I chased <laughs> after Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> but if you pull that little cord there, you could wiggle yeah, the you feet. Yeah, you can make a hoop. <laughs> it's still alive. Wind Taylor goes with him, yeah. But I don't think we're quite done, Kate. But you can hang with Taylor. Yeah, okay. No, she, 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 she,